Hey folks and welcome back. We're continuing on with our lightning tutorial. Uh, I'm over on the Unity side now and I need to look at setting up a particle system to fire some lightning. So I've got a very basic scene here. It's just got a ground plane and I just threw a quick texture on it. Uh, there's nothing particularly exciting happening in the scene overall. Uh, I'm just going to right click here and I'm going to go to effects and create a particle system, which I can rename to be lightning. Okay, so you can see that the particle system is doing its thing here and it's shooting particles off up into the sky. Now for a lightning strike, I need to have a single particle that is birthed across a large area. And one that's going to be birthed quite quickly, as you can imagine, lightning moves quite fast. So I'm going to set the duration, which is the, uh, the length of each cycle of the particle system here to three. Now the start lifetime, I'm actually going to set this a little bit high at least to get started so that I can get a good look at what's happening with the lightning. So I'll set it to one to two. That should probably be much lower uh, by the time we're finished. The start size here, I'm gonna to set to zero because I don't want the uh, lightning strikes to go up into the sky. The start size is going to need to be pretty big. I'm gonna set that up to about 20 um, so that we can get a clear read of each of our sprites. So that's everything I need there. The under the emission, I don't want to burst particles over time. So I'm going to set that to be zero. What I want is to have one born every cycle. So I'm going to hit the little plus button here. Now that's 30 being born all on top of each other. I'm going to set that to one. So now I have got one particle being birthed every cycle. So I'm going to open up the shape tab now and I'm going to change it from cone over to box. I want lightning strikes to happen uh, across a long thin area so i'm going to set the box scale to be something like 40 maybe and i'll put this to 10 and i'm going to put the z to zero so they're going to be birthed across this space here so we can see the particles are being born across the length of that box now the basic movement of my lightning particle system has been set up but really i need to go and define the look before we can go much further with the animation so under the renderer tab here i'm going to need to attach a material into my particle system so to do that i'm going to jump over to my materials folder here and inside the materials folder i'm going to go and create a new material and at least for the initial setup i'm going to use just a fairly standard default particle universal render pipeline particle shader. I'll just use the simple lit shader for now. Under the base map, I'm going to need to go and find the texture that I have brought in from Houdini. So I dragged and dropped this in already and it's called Lightning Atlas V1. So that's the one I'm going to be looking, looking for. So. There it is there. So that's the one that we generated in the last video. And in fact, I'll just drag and drop the material in here like this. And you can see that the material has been picked up by the particle system and it is showing the complete texture atlas. Now what we need to do is tell the particle system that this is in fact a tiled atlas. We can do that with texture sheet animation module. So I'm gonna put that one down and I need to set it to four by four because there is 16 images in my texture atlas so four by four and now it is playing through all of them each cycle of the particle system so playing through the 16 frames so i need to change this from frame over time to random between two constants because i only want one image to show each cycle and we can change this to to one to 16 and it will pick a different tile each time it fires the particle. Going back to my shader now, I can tell the shader that it needs to be transparent. And because we output as a PNG and we had a nice clean alpha, it cuts out our shape and gives us a nice clean forked lightning shape. Now, while we're here, we can start playing around with emission. And the emission is going to have a fairly big impact on our lightning, uh, as you can well imagine our lightning is going to glow quite brightly. So I've dialed that up because it is a HDR color. It should start emitting light. Now it's not at the moment and that's because I don't have anything attached to my post process volume over here. So I'm going to add an override and the main override is that we're going to use is going to be bloom 
and this will start to have a fairly big impact at the minute i start dialing up intensity here it will start to have an impact and you can see our lightning is now starting to glow along with everything else in our scene that was a quick look at taking our texture atlas that we created over in houdini and setting it up as a lightning particle system in unity uh, so for a lot of you guys uh, maybe that's enough and you have your lightning system working uh, in which case i thank you for your time and i hope you got something from these two tutorials for everybody else who wants to go in a little deeper uh, just to let you in on a little secret if you're new to the effects area we always want more control now in this case we have a basic setup done but I would like to have more control over the look of the lightning. Uh, I would like to have more control over the animation of the lightning as well. So to gain that more control, we're going to end up going back to Houdini and building a little bit more complexity into our network so we get more control over the model. And we're going to have to look at putting out textures with more rich data in them so that we can manipulate those in the Unity side in a shader and feed that back into our particle system. So for everyone else who wants to continue, I hope to see you in the next videos.